we are now going to discuss what determines the strength of a permanent dipole. Uh, so uh, the point is that stronger dipoles are formed if there is a greater difference in electronegativity between the atoms. Uh, so for example, I have three molecules. One is uh, HCl and the other one is uh, HBr. And the third one is H bonded to iodine. Now, if you look at these three molecules, uh, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, down the group, uh, down group seven, the electronegativity decreases. So, so chlorine is very electronegative. Iodine has slightly less electronegativity. So what's going to happen is that chlorine is going to attract the electrons very, very strongly. So I'm going to draw a bigger arrow. This uh, bigger arrow represents uh, that chlorine is attracting the bonded electrons in this molecule towards itself very, very strongly. Uh, bromine's electronegativity is slightly lesser, down the group electronegativity decreases, so uh, bromine, I am representing a smaller arrow, its uh, force of attraction for the electrons is lesser, and iodine, that would be the least uh, electronegative of the three elements. So down the group, uh, iodine is very less electronegative, whereas on top of the group, chlorine is very electronegative. So uh, there would be an equal distribution of electrons in all three atom, uh, three molecules. But in HCl, the electron distribution would be very uneven. All electrons would be pulled towards chlorine, so there's going to be a, a very large, slight negative charge and a very large, slight positive charge because due to greater uh, difference in electronegativity because there is more unequal electron distribution in this molecule. Whereas in uh, HBr, uh, because bromine is slightly less electronegative, so the uh, although there would still be a negative charge on bromine, a slight negative and a slight positive charge on bromine, but that would be smaller, relatively smaller. And in the case of iodine, it's going to be very, very weak. So the strength of dipoles, uh, HCl has the strongest dipole. HPR has relatively weaker dipoles and HI has very weak dipoles. So if the electro difference in electronegativity is very, very large, uh, dipoles are going to be strong. If the difference in electronegativity is smaller, dipoles are going to be weaker. In a similar manner, I'm going to compare these two molecules over here. And uh, in the first molecule, I have uh, carbon in the middle a trigonal planar arrangement, a fan-shaped arrangement, and I have an oxygen and uh, chlorine atoms bonded to that carbon in the center. Now, uh, the difference in electronegativity between oxygen and chlorine is very slight, so what's going to happen is that in this particular case, uh, oxygen would try to pull electrons, it's going to try and pull electrons towards itself, whereas chlorine would try and pull the electrons, it's going to exert a force of attraction and try to pull the electrons in the molecule towards itself and this chlorine will also try to pull the electrons towards itself. Now, since the difference in electronegativity is very slight, so the dipoles would almost cancel out, and in this case, uh, the overall dipole would be very small. So, although the electronegativities are not exactly the same, but uh, oxygen and chlorine are in the top right corner, so they're very electronegative elements. Their electronegativity is almost similar, so dipoles almost cancel out. So they cancel out. But in this other molecule, you have hydrogen, which is a very electropositive element. It uh, generally loses electrons. So you have carbon bonded to an electronegative oxygen. The other two atoms are not very electronegative. So in this case, the dipoles are not canceling out. So all the electrons would be uh, more tightly pulled towards oxygen. Oxygen would have a greater force of attraction for the electrons. So in this particular case, this oxygen atom would have a slight negative charge, whereas the hydrogen on the other side are going to have, their electrons would also be indirectly pulled towards oxygen. So uh, the hydrogen on the other side would have, would show a slight positive charge. So in this case, the dipoles are not canceling out. So if you look at these two molecules, over here, the elements had, the atoms surrounding carbon had almost similar electronegativity, but over here, the atoms surrounding carbon had different electronegativity. So all the electrons are pulled towards one side which and that side becomes slight negative and the other side becomes slight positive. So in this case, this molecule has a stronger dipole, this one has a weaker dipole. Now we've discussed permanent dipoles in a lot of detail and we've discussed uh, when permanent dipoles are formed. 
and uh, how uh, the strengths are affected. Now, um, uh, we're going to discuss the intermolecular forces, which is permanent dipole, permanent dipole interaction. So, so I've drawn uh, three molecules of HCl. So there are three molecules of HCl, three completely independent molecules of HCl. Now, uh, HCl is a polar molecule. It has a permanent dipole. The chlorine being the more electronegative element uh, pulls the electron density towards itself and has a slight negative charge on it. And the hydrogen uh, has a slight positive charge. So all HCl molecules have permanent dipoles. Now the reason why uh, HCl molecules are going to attract each other is because uh, positive and negative charges attract each other. So this chlorine, which is slightly negative, is going to have a force of attraction for this hydrogen of the other molecule which is slightly positive. And this hydrogen, which is slightly positive, would be attracting the chlorine, the slight negative chlorine of another HCl molecule. And so on and so forth. So this hydrogen over here, which is slightly positive, would be attracting uh, the slight negative chlorine of the other molecule. So, so different HCl molecules would be attracting each other because uh, the slight positive side of one molecule would be attracting a slight negative side of another molecule. So slight positive attracting a slight negative, slight positive side attracting a slight negative side. So they're, they're going to be forces of attraction between these molecules and these would be called permanent dipole, permanent dipole interaction. Now one thing to remember about these uh, permanent dipole, permanent dipole interaction is that they could be within uh, molecules, for example HCl molecules attracting each other or I've drawn another molecule over here, uh, this oxygen being the more electronegative element, it's going to pull the uh, electron density towards itself and it's going to have a slight negative charge and the hydrogens are going to exhibit a slight positive charge because the electron density is towards oxygen. So uh, these molecules also have permanent dipoles and the force of attraction is going to be similar. So uh, this oxygen, slight negative oxygen would be attracting the positive hydrogens of the other molecule or they could also be attracted to these HCl molecules if they are together. So these HCl molecules could also be attracted uh, to the, the slight negative oxygen. So the slight positive side of the HCl molecule could be attracted to the slight negative side of the oxygen atom. So there would be forces of attraction, slight negative attracting slight positive. So there would be all sorts of forces of attraction. This hydrogen positive would be attra attracted by the oxygen which is slight negative. So they would all, uh, there would be all sorts of intermolecular forces, all molecules attracting each other. So they could be permanent dipole, permanent dipole interaction could be between molecules of the same type or they could be between molecules of different types. So uh, a slight positive region attracting the other molecule's slight negative re uh, region. So it's a very simple uh, intermolecular force. Uh, what you need to know is uh, what, how different types of permanent dipoles are formed and um, um, uh, what does the strength of permanent dipoles depend on? So one thing that you must know is that a stronger permanent dipole, so if there's a stronger permanent dipole, then that would lead to stronger interactions, permanent dipole, permanent dipole interactions. So you're going to have stronger intermolecular forces molecules are going to attract each other strongly so stronger intermolecular forces and that would affect all sorts of physical properties like uh, melting points and boiling points would be higher or the viscosity would be greater if the, if the intermolecular forces are stronger And the surface tension would also be greater for a molecule having more uh, intermolecular forces. So the surface tension would be uh, greater as well. So all sorts of physical properties that depend on intermolecular forces. They, uh, if you have stronger permanent dipoles, this, they would be stronger permanent dipole, permanent dipole interaction. You're going to have stronger intermolecular forces.